my non-surprise. Walgreens is not open. You would think 7-Elevens in LA have like cotton onto the LA vibes, but no, I only drink oat milk. So I'm going back to my house and yeah, man, unfortunately I'm just gonna have to drink my milk black because I can't find the milk I need. Hi guys, welcome to Monday of my vlog. This morning the dilemma was that I couldn't find any oat milk, but I ended up going back to the grocery store near my house at 7 a.m. to find some. So normally what I do when I wake up, I wake up about 6 or 6.30. The first thing I do is make a cup of coffee, and then after that I jump into checking my emails. It's easier to read my emails in the morning because no one's really disturbing me, and then after I check my emails, I break back into my meetings, and then back to beginning some of my tasks. In the middle of the day, around 11 to 12, I go on InShot or um, in Visco to prepare whatever content I'm about to post on Instagram. As a content creator, you wanna post almost every day or every other day, so I have to edit my videos that day if I didn't do it the night before. And then I'm also responding to comments and engaging with as many people as I can. As soon as I'm done posting on Instagram or YouTube or whatever, I'm back to working on my regulatory affairs responsibilities. As a senior manager of regulatory affairs, your responsibilities could be anything from working on protocols to helping cultivate FDA strategies. It kind of just depends on the kind of company you work for. Okay guys, I'm gonna end off my vlog for Monday here. I'm getting ready to go look at a showing for a new apartment because I'm getting ready to move at the end of April. I will do it a voiceover. I probably already did it in a voiceover all the things that I did today. And I'm probably gonna spend the rest of my day just creating content. That's what I like to do, so. Throughout my work day, apart from my lunch break, I spend it doing all my regulatory responsibilities and then I like to spend the rest of my evening doing anything that I have to do for Career Savage or for my personal Instagram and YouTube channel. I do have something that I'm working on still for work. It's an information request to a health authority. So I have to make sure that that is all the documents for that are good to go. I'm waiting for someone higher up to approve the document before I can send it off to publishing. But that is pretty much it for today and I probably won't do a lot of talking. For Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'll probably just show you guys and then um, keep doing voiceovers. But thanks so much for watching Monday. I'm acting like I'm ending the YouTube video but you're still gonna see the rest of the week. But I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of the video. morning welcome to day two guys so today i actually had a bunch of information requests that we received from a different regulatory body sometimes when you have a program in in various nations japan europe um, Middle East, you have health authorities that will ask you different questions about your program. The questions can range from anything from CMC, which is chemistry, manufacturing, and controls, to information about the clinical data that you presented for your application. And as regulatory affairs, it's your responsibility to formulate those responses. So that's what a lot of my um, tasks were today. And then also I had a bunch of meetings to discuss those health authority questions with people higher up than me. And in the middle of the day, I had a in, I had a meeting with my um, social media manager who's actually based in Nigeria, who's helping me post for Career Savage. So I meet with her once every other week to just kind of provide direction. All the stars of a thousand spotlights. <sighs> Today my primary focus was preparing for a health authority meeting with the FDA and in preparing for that meeting you have to draft the meeting request and then also start drafting the briefing book and within the briefing book you kind of outline what you're going to talk about within the meeting and the different disciplines whether that's CMC, non-clinical or clinical will meet with regulatory affairs to kind of formulate the questions that they want to ask. The point of having a health authority meeting, whether it's a type A, type B, or type C, is to get guidance from that health authority to help you, I guess, kind of come up with a better strategy for your program. So for the meeting I was preparing for, it was a type B meeting. And you can check the FDA's website for timelines when you have to submit the meeting request and the briefing book.
spilling over in today I'm still working on the meeting request it takes quite a bit of time to prepare for one as I said you can check the FDA's website to kind of see the different types of type of meetings there are but for a type B meeting it's either going to be just a regular type B where it's mainly pre IND or you're mitigating some sort of risk or issue with your application or it could be an end of phase meeting so a lot of people like to have type B end of phase two meetings and there's different formats that can take place with your meetings with the agency and that can be a written response only, a face to face or a teleconference. Obviously with COVID a lot of people are doing teleconference and in general we do telecon meetings. Um, people hate to get a written response only from the agency and that's why it's so important to make sure that the questions that you're going to ask aren't going to result in the FDA automatically giving you a written response only because they can do that. If you do submit your written request for a face-to-face a, a -face meeting or a teleconference meeting and your questions are as simple as do you agree with our strategy blah 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 the agency may just say yes and send you a written response only whereas having those conversations with the agency really do help your organization formulate better strategies i've mentioned before that being in regulatory affairs means you're in a ton of meetings and you're always on the phone so that's essentially what i'm doing here is talking to some of my direct reports as well as my higher ups about the different programs that i'm working on and the different strategies as well as the temperament of the fda you will always get different re review groups and it's nice to talk with other people in regulatory affairs to kind of understand how the agency feels about your division um, for example they may feel differently about oncology than they do about regenerative medicine so those are the kind of conversations that i have throughout the day so today's thursday and i know i told you guys at the beginning <laughs> So today's Thursday, and I know I told you guys at the beginning of this vlog that I wasn't really gonna be talking much anymore, but today is actually something really fun at my job. They try and do this for consultants so we can still feel like bonded to the organization because we work so much with clients rather than internally. So this is like a way to keep everyone happy working for the company. We are doing a mixology class and it actually starts in four minutes. And I thought it'd be fun to kind of like film myself doing the class because this is also one of the perks of being a consultant when you work for a great consulting firm. They really do try different ways to like keep you happy. We have like an annual Christmas party where the CEO flies everyone out no matter where you live to the headquarters in New Jersey. We obviously couldn't do that this year because of COVID and the year before that I missed it because I was traveling in Europe for weddings and I was also traveling to Nigeria to, for family for Christmas and stuff like that. But this is the second mix, mixology class we've had and in addition to this we also do like conferences that they send us on. I'm going to be going to a conference later this month in March. Obviously it's virtual but it's still a lot of fun because it's great to network with people within my industry. It is yeah, that yeah so that's just kind of like one of the perks of being a consultant is that when you work for a really good firm they try and do fun things and you get to do it twice because we had a we had a chocolate tasting during the holidays for my client so it's almost like you get the best of both worlds so if my client did a mixology class for my team I probably also get to be a part of that too so pretty neat this is what we had to pick up so I got Bacardi because we're gonna be making something called a Hotel National and then I got tequila because we're also making Paloma which is one of my favorite drinks they told us to just buy all the ingredients and they'll reimburse us later, which they normally do. Never worried about getting my money back with them. I'm squeezing limes ahead of the class because we were supposed to buy lime juice, but I don't like stuff from Concentrate, so I'm just gonna make my own lime juice, my own fresh lime juice. This is just one of the fun things. Today has been an absolute nightmare. Yeah, let me run down my schedule for you guys while I'm doing this. My first meeting was at 5 a.m., okay? I didn't talk in the meeting, but it was about one of the clinical trials that I'm working on. Let me know what you think about my makeup. Cause I'm filming some Career Savage videos later today. <laughs> so. Mm. Then I had a Career Savage console at 6.45 a.m. Was basically a zombie for really early in the morning. Then after that 6.45 console, I actually had a 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. meeting. After the eight to, 7 to 8 meeting, I had an 8 to 9 meeting. Then I had a 30 minute break. And then I had a meeting from 9.30 up until like 11. And then I had an hour break, which I had to send out some meeting minutes from a meeting that I never finished typing the meeting for, but someone asked me for the minutes, so I had to send that out. And then I went back into another meeting from 11 to 12, 12 to 1 one to two, did a little bit of work again from two to 2.30, had to do my makeup, 
because I'm filming today and I'm also gonna be on camera in front of colleagues, so I wanna look presentable. And then run to the store to get all these ingredients and now I'm here. So basically what you've just heard me say is I've been in meetings all damn day. And that's one of the downsides about consulting is like, or just being in pharma in general, I think. I really hate the amount of meetings we have, but they're all necessary, unfortunately. Yeah, so that's one of the downsides of just being in pharma in general is all these dang meetings. And like, as a consultant, you still have to perform regardless. So after this fun thing, I'm gonna do some work for maybe like two more, three more hours. I'm supposed to read up some regulatory policies because I'm doing some extra stuff on the side for one of the diff a different team within my client. It's just exhausting to be honest. So anyway, it's four o'clock now So I'm gonna sign on for this mixology class. I said really fun like six or seven times So just excuse that But it really is nice when you work for a consulting firm that still tries to do things that are interactive within your organization Because the downside of consulting is you can kind of feel Imposter syndrome. I believe that's what people would call it because you're working for the client so much that you kind of forget that you're not a full employee, full time employee of that client, but you're a full time employee of a consulting firm. So, in order to combat that, organizations try to have events such as this. And I think it's pretty effective for the cult this consulting firm that I was working for. Um, they would always try and have events, and it did make people feel a lot more connected. I literally messed up the whole recipe, but that's okay. Because it's still, actually. But I just don't like salt. Okay, I'm gonna get back and I'll vlog more tomorrow. Bye guys. Thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Ugh. Fridays, like, they don't allow us to have too many meetings at my um, client because I want people to have like the opportunity to actually work and also like get off a little early on Friday. So some people will end their days pretty early. So I'm gonna like really try and focus and get some of the administrative tasks that I need to get done. There are these, there's this document that I was supposed to have typed. I've been sitting here for four hours, just getting myself organized finally, because no one is bothering me. So I love days like this. I love days like this, but I also have a lot of stuff to do in my personal life. So this kind of like is cramping my style. My skin looks so good. I've been using some different products. This is not my personal channel, so I don't even know why I'm saying this, but yeah, I've been look, using some new products because I had like a really bad reaction once, like a month ago, and it's gotten a lot better. I'm trying not to like wear makeup because it's not great for my skin. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Like I said before, it's kind of hard to vlog what I do because I can't say too much about certain projects that I'm working on, but this week was a really busy week for me just because we are preparing for an FDA meeting next week. We have two this month and then we have another one next month for the program that I'm working on. And I've gotten a lot more involved in early phase stuff. And early phase is basically like phase one, phase two, I don't know, yeah, phase one, phase two. Early phase teams are a lot more needy than your late phase teams because early phase just wants to make sure like is a protocol okay to use yet because you're supposed to wait 30 days after you make an amendment to a protocol or when you submit a protocol in general before moving forward so like they always can ask regulatory before they make changes to protocols to make sure that it's not going to result in a clinical hold but yeah early phase has taken up a lot of my time this week as well as my mid to late late phase program just busy all around cell therapy is great because you really do get that exposure and all types of experience but anyway 1256 and i'm gonna end the vlog here if you guys want me to do another week in my life in general as like a content creator or as a regulatory consultant just leave comments down in the description box and make sure you guys are subscribing to my channel i can only keep making content like this if you guys are hitting that subscribe button but until next time guys bye